good morning and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. Hope you guys are well. Um, I hope it's all good in your life. I hope you've not gone too mad in this lockdown, which is nearly at an end. And then into some kind of weird tier system, which I don't fully understand. I do understand that I might be able to go out for a meal soon and have a little drink in a pub, which would be fantastic. Looking forward to that. Uh, apart from that, everything's fine and dandy here. Beautiful day, really crisp, cold uh, winter's morning, which I absolutely adore. And I was wearing a really interesting perfume for it, which brings me to the point of the review. Now, the wonderful guys at Aroma Concepts, who I've um, had some perfumes from before, have sent me a couple of perfumes to review. Really, really kind of them. I'm very, you know, very much appreciated. It's always nice to um, to get extra stuff to review. Now, they sent me two. And one I knew nothing about and one I knew a bit about. So what we'll do is I'll show you what they sent. They sent me this one, which is the Ministry of Oud from under the Paris Corner Company. And this is Oud Satin. So we know what this is about. So I'm not gonna, I'm, I will do a full review of this coming up soon. Um, but I'm not going to talk about this one today. And by the way, just a quick spoiler alert, this is really good. It's obvious what this is um, a clone of, but again, you know, bottles are brilliant. I love these bottles. Really, really good one and well worth it if you're interested in that. But I will do a full review and a side-by-side -side comparison with the original at some point soon. But the other one they sent me, well, I was a bit surprised by this one. Now, the guys at Aroma Concept really, really been raving about this one. They reckon it's, you know, one of their favourite perfumes. It's, you know... Uh, the chap I speak to was saying it's one of his most, probably his most complimented. People are always asking what it is and where he can get it and that sort of thing. But I've never heard of it, and I've never really heard of the house either. I have one other from this house, um, which I haven't properly investigated yet. But the one we're going to talk about today is this beauty. And this is called Oud Pour Classic from a company called Cadlage. Now, I've never heard of them, as I say, up until I met Aroma Concepts and they sent me another one. So I did a little bit of research. Now, because they're new to me, it doesn't mean they're a new company. And Cadillac have been around since 96, and they're actually based in Dubai. They have, uh, you know, quite a lot of perfumes in their collection. They also do body sprays, body mists, and bakur, and oils, and things like that. So I was intrigued to hear about this wonderful perfume that everybody from Aroma Concepts was really, really raving about. Um, so I thought, okay, we'll send it down and then, uh, you know, we'll have a look at it. I'll wear it a few times and then we'll do a review. So what I'll do is we'll go through the notes. I'm wearing it this morning. I've done the school run and this has been absolutely wonderful for the school run and for many other situations as well. So what I'll do, we will spray a little bit more for the purposes of the review. Wow. Um, and then we'll talk about the presentation, the notes, how it wears, and what it's like, and whether it's a good one or not. So, we shall get into it. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the presentation. This is a 100ml bottle. It weighs an absolute ton. It's incredibly pretty. The sprayer is awesome. The cap is really solid, really, really heavy. It's beautiful. I love the look of this and it looks great sitting with my other bottles as well. So I'm really, really, uh, you know, on the presentation side of it, it's awesome. I mean, it comes in a box. Box is nothing special, but we don't wear the box, do we? And I know some people get really, I, I, I do feel a bit bad actually, because I know some of you are really interested in boxes. I'm not, it just doesn't really bother me. Unless it's something like outrageously good, like, you know, the um, Swedoff boxes are fantastic. I like the Zerzhoff boxes as well. But that's about it, I'm not really fussed by boxes. I do apologize if, you're, if you feel the reviews are lacking in the box department, we will maybe start incorporating some more box chat. But I find basically unboxing videos incredibly dull. Um, so I don't really like making them because they bore me, bore me rigid when I watch them. So I don't tend to do unboxings and I'm not a massive fan of first impressions. I do do the occasional first impression video if I want to get something out quickly. But I think it's better to try and at least wear the perfume a few times so you can talk a little bit more about it. Because when you do like a first impressions video, you know you're going to have to do a follow up video up to it. So it's like, can't we just wait <laughs> and try and do a video encapsulating everything so you've got it all there. Anyway, I'm going way off track here. So when this arrived, I looked at the notes, um, and again, because it's been really hyped to me, I'm like, okay, let's have a look. So on the top, you have rose and you have argwood. In the middle, you have patchouli and geranium, and on the base, you have oud and cedarwood. And I thought, yay, it's another rose oud. Now, I love rose ouds, don't get me wrong, I have loads of them. That's, you know, if I look at my collection, I've got more rose ouds than anything. 
So I was like, okay, uh, all right, well, let's see where it goes. I mean, the good thing about combining rose and oud together is it can always, it, very often you can make it smell completely different. It all hinges on how rich the rose is, how potent the oud is, what quality of oud they're using, you know, what type of oud it is. You know, how, how do the supporting materials celebrate the oud? How is it presented? But generally, you know, quite a lot of the ones I like have got a dark oud and a strong, rich rose, and they're very potent, and, and they're just lovely. So I was thinking, okay, it's another rose oud. Let's give it a go. So as you see, I've sprayed it just then, and I'll spray a little bit more as well, actually. I don't know why I'm spraying a bit more. You'll find out in a bit. But I just wanted, I forgot to show you how, how it sits on the skin. It's immense. So... What does it smell like? Well, when I first smelt it, I thought, I sent me the wrong bottle. This is not a rose oud. This smells nothing like a rose oud. And a note from the brand, the brand says this is a luxurious, a luxurious fragrance of oud and sparkling seawater notes. That is different. I don't often read sparkling seawater notes. And as I've mentioned before, the only aquatic I own is actually also Perez's Megamara. And that's not like any normal aquatic. And neither is this one. It's beautiful. It's such an amazing fragrance, but it smells nothing like a rose oud. <laughs> now, this is going to be music to some people's ears, and other people are going to be a bit puzzled by it, because what you get is a really sweet, fresh, florally, fruity vibe. It's just delicious. The rose smells nothing like any other rose I've got. You've really got to look for it, and it's a very watery, almost fruity-like rose. And it's just, oh, it's stunning. It really is a stunning fragrance. I love it. And it's, oh, I don't know, it's so light and airy, but there's a real heaviness to it. It's not going anywhere. Now, the brand and other people have said that this lasts for 48 hours on skin. I've got no way of, of checking that out. I mean, like most people, I have a shower in the morning and then I sort of insist on having a long soak in the bath in the evenings um, before I chill out and relax. It's just part of my kind of calm, you know, wind down procedure. You know, a, a really hot bath in the evening. I love being in it, oh, it's just fantastic. So I've got no way of testing out whether this lasts for 48 hours on skin. But what I will say is when you wear it, if you don't, you know, if you wear it in the evening, you will wake up and it's still very, very much on your skin. The performance is extremely long lasting, like silly long lasting. But oh, it's just like, it's just, it does smell like a Middle Eastern perfume, don't get me wrong. It's not um, reinventing the wheel in that respect, but it just smells so different to the notes that suggest it's going to be. You do get a little bit of this sort of rosiness, but as I say, it's a watery rose. It's, this is a great one for those that don't like rose, actually. You'll be able to wear it. Because it, it's just, it's a celebration. You have to really look into it to find that as a, as a defined rose note because of the wateriness of it and just the general sweetness and fruitiness of the whole thing. There's no fruit listed, but it does have a very fruity vibe. After a couple of hours, you become more aware of the patchouli, which helps it give it a little bit more class, I think, and it is a, a very refined perfume. It, if I compare it to anything, uh, any of my other oud-based fragrance, I'm leaning more towards Byredo's Oud Immortel. Now, it doesn't smell the same at all, but they both kind of do the same thing. Although with Byredo's Oud Immortel, the Limoncello is very much sharper and it's much, much fruitier than this one. This has a, a watery fruitiness to it. It's divine. And then obviously the Oud itself is a good question point because it's mentioned twice. It's Argawood is obviously Oud and then it has Oud in the base. I don't particularly pick it up as an Oud. Now, often... Middle Eastern fragrances quite often call themselves ouds when they're not. They're just you know using the word oud instead of perfume. And in this case, I think they've used an incredibly clean oud to give it volume or, or depth. Now, because of the price point, I would imagine that the you know if it's real oud or the quality of the oud isn't going to be up there with some of the others because oud is obviously such an amazingly expensive uh, material. But I don't know. It just it all combines together to give this wonderful Middle Eastern vibe. It's incredibly wearable. And it's, oh, it's divine. It's completely unisex. It's completely ageless. This is one that I think the young thrusters will absolutely adore. And us sort of more you know, mature fragrance enthusiasts will also adore. It's going to, I mean, it works really, really well in cold weather. Cold weather. It, it works really well in cold weather. But I think in the summer, this is going to be a killer. I think it's going to absolutely shine. Purely because of the performance, you know, you can spray this on, 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 go to work on a hot day if you work outside, spray it on in the morning, come home, and I'm pretty damn sure it's still going to be there 
pumping out as you know throughout your day when it comes to the performance side of it yes we've established it's incredibly long lasting it has a decent amount of projection and a really strong CRs, but it's not a beast mode it doesn't kick out everywhere you wouldn't think oh this is too much it leaves you in a wonderful bubble if you supply it to your chest your wrists your neck etc you're going to be in this beautiful scent bubble you're going to give off a wonderful sweet sort of enchanting enticing aroma all day it just lasts and lasts and lasts and you know i think because it lasts so long it's important that it doesn't go over the top with it you know if it, if, if it kicked out like some of my perfumes for that amount of time you'd be so sick of it and because it, it has a subtle projection and a subtle sillage you know it just it works perfectly as i say you're in this little bubble and it is a bubble it's not a fog it doesn't go everywhere you're in quite a, an enclosed um, sort of area so the you know it pushes out so far but not too far anyone around you will be aware of it but it's such a an airiness to it there's such a a, a light sort of almost ozonic sort of uh, vibe to this perfume it just feels awesome and it does smell very luxurious now I will say, I think Aroma Concepts, this is £42. So it's not a super cheapy uh, Middle Eastern uh, perfume by any means. But it's well worth it. You, this will last you for a very long time. You don't need to spray too much. You know, a, a good few shots and you're ready to go. And it will last you, as I say, all day. In terms of where you could wear it, it's perfect for work. Absolutely perfect for work. Really, really nice casual fragrance. It will, you could probably dress it up as well. I think if you're going out for a meal or something like that, it would be good for that. Really, really good for going down the pub or you know, on a summer's day, going out for the day with your family, that's the one you want. I mean, if you were going camping for the weekend and there were no showers, this is a must. You could go camping on the Friday night and come back on the Sunday and you'd still be smelling of that according to the manufacturer. I don't know if it lasts for 48 hours. I mean, I have no idea. I was talking to, I was sort of put it, put it on Instagram, you know, it's a bit like having a, a sports car that does 200 mile an hour. You're never going to go 200 mile an hour, but it's nice to know it's there. So, you know, you're never going to wear this for 48 hours, but it's nice to know you can, I suppose. Um, but yeah, oh God, man, what a, what a great frag. Absolutely adore this one. Super, super performance, beautiful smelling. And one that if you're kind of like, you want a Middle Eastern perfume, you want that Middle Eastern vibe, but you don't want a heavy smoky oud or you don't want, you know, something that's too spicy or anything like that. This is perfect. It's just so wearable. Um, yeah, it's, it's been an absolute revelation to me. And I really want to say thanks to the guys at Aroma uh, Concepts for sending this over because I think it's just, ah, oh, I'm so impressed with it. There's four in this collection of the Oud Pour series. I have no idea, by the way, why it's called Classic with two Ks. That makes no sense to me at all, but there you go. Um, so there's some, there's a few more, I think three more in this collection of these series, and they're all quite highly rated. So hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on them and give you a rundown on those, because this is very impressive stuff. And just, you know, one more time. I know I've got my mucky fingerprints all over it, so I do apologise, but look at it. Such a beautiful bottle and very, very different to uh, a lot of the Middle Eastern fragrances and how they come. Because quite often they get quite gaudy bottles and stuff like that, which are very popular in the Middle East. I'm not a massive fan of that kind of bottle. I like the simplistic um, plain ones. You know, my favourite brand is obviously Auto Parisian. I love those bottles. And this kind of gives that vibe. Lots of glass. Um, it's all very clean. Sort of no e weird edges or lines on it or anything like that. So all in all, this is a bit of a star. Love it. Um, so there you have it. That is Cadlage Perfumes Oud Pour Classic. Now, listen, guys, thank you very much for your um, support. And would Mr. London Lion or Mr. Lion's Den, if you could please um, contact me on Instagram with your details, I will send out your burner and your um, Oud chips because congratulations. Ta -da! you have won our 2,000 subscriber competition. So thank you very much. Anyway, guys, listen, I've got to go to work, so I better run. So have a great day. Thank you very much. We will see you on the next video. Cheers and bye.